Hey everybody, Joel at Up North Aquatics. Thanks for stopping by. Um, hanging out in the fish room, looking for stuff to do. There's a couple of things that are bothering me, so I think we'll take care of them. First one being the Ambuna cichlids and my finger in front of the camera. The Ambuna cichlids in the 10 gallon tank. Time to do right by them. It's been a few weeks that they've been in there, so we'll get them into something bigger. Uh, but the first thing I think I'm gonna tackle is uh, I think nature's trying to tell me I need to do a water change on uh, the 55 gallon with the goldfish in it. So I'm gonna get my siphon started and then I'll kind of explain my thought process uh, as we watch it drain. Okay, I should probably, um, I guess say first of all, why do we do water changes? Well, I mean many reasons, but the main one is nitrate. Nitrate is produced when your fish eat and then make waste and then the good bacteria in your tank converts that waste into ammo or from ammonia into nitrate. It's uh, in the long term, it is the byproduct of fish waste. Um, nitrate in high doses is dangerous for fish, so um, you need to find a way to manage it. Now, most of my tanks, excuse me, are managed with multiple types of plants like this identical 55 gallon with the same light schedule, same feeding schedule, and uh, even more fish in it because it's a breeding tank, um, is using hornwort and duckweed um, to manage the nitrates. As the plants grow using the light schedule, they grow and they eat the nitrates as they're growing. Uh, but no algae on that tank because on this tank, the goldfish ate the duckweed, which is normal, totally fine. I knew it was gonna happen. Uh, duckweed's super easy to grow anyway. But now I'm relying on just this hornwort to keep the nitrates at bay in between my water changes. And you can't just go from having two types of plants and completely deleting one type of plant without causing um, a spike in the nitrates because that little bit of hornwort, which is like the up and down plant you see over here and all throughout the tank, is not going to be able to keep up with it on its own after relying on um, only having to take care of half of it. So what happens is that excess nitrate in the water with the light cycle triggers an algae bloom, which is why the front glass of this, especially down along the bottom here, is starting to grow ridiculous amounts of algae. Um, so basically, even though it's not a normal time I would be doing water changes, I'd usually change the whole uh, fish room at once. I'm going to give this one extra water changes to keep those nitrates at bay until the hornwort grows enough that it can manage it on its own just like all the plants in this tank and this tank and the two little tanks awesome camera work and all these other tanks um, have have managed to do on their own which is grow enough plants with my light cycle that they could keep the nitrate levels down in between my maintenance um, so yeah just gonna give her a nice water change and uh, let the um, hornwort grow into its new environment and kind of balance out based on the nitrate level that's in there which right now it can't take care of but that when you pay attention to things like this, you can, you can use them uh, to your advantage. You can, you can let nature kind of do the talking for you and tell you what needs to be done um, to an extent. Like if you were just a, a fish keeper, which is how I started, just worried about the fish, I might be getting test strips out or I might just be taking a scraper and scraping the algae every few days or whatever until it's time for my scheduled water change or whatever the deal is. Whereas I could just look at it and know, okay, there's gotta be too many nitrates, too many nutrients in this water because the lights haven't changed at all. It's still getting the same light source for the same amount of time, but now we're getting extra growth that we don't want. Um, and that's one of the things I'm trying to show on this channel is that nature is, plays a huge role in all this stuff and paying attention to it. Um, can make your life very easy. So no test strips involved. Took one look at these two tanks side, to side by side and was easily able to tell that this one's having a nitrate issue. Don't want to hurt my goldfish. 
I'm trying to grow them like softball size, um, keep their water clean, and now I know I need to take care of them. Um, and before I start rambling, we'll uh, we'll let this drain, we'll top it off, and then we'll talk about moving some cichlids. All right, since I'm impatient and uh, well, half impatient and half ready to chill out for the night um, and be done. We're gonna wait to fill this up. I'm gonna finish my filming and we will move these Mbuna around. Um, got them as a gift, tried to breed them. Uh, did not have any luck. Figured I could move them quick, so I put them in a 10 gallon just for a temporary holding. Turns out I can't move them quick and now I'm kind of starting to catch that bug again and I want to keep them. So, we need to find a better home for them. What better tank for the Imbuna than a 75 gallon tank that's already got a rock structure built into it. Uh, the Imbuna, they love rock structures, they love plant cover, they love anything they can hide in or under. They like having that sense of security. They like to breed that way. It's a huge water volume, so it'll be super easy to keep it clean. Uh, just one problem, we still have our two female guppies that uh, we're waiting to see if we get fry out of and uh like five or six maybe dark blue shrimp that i can't even see so i get to go fishing before uh we move the abuna in here but i can move them in right away um we'll take these guppies put them in a catch cup with their shrimp friends and they could just live in there for a little bit and we could catch the abunas out and put them straight in this tank now keep in mind the only reason i can do that is because every tank in this fish room is um, the same exact parameter water and because I heat the room and not the tanks the water temperature is the same so I'm not really changing any parameters uh, moving the fish from tank to tank I can grab any fish in here and put it in any other tank in the room it'll do just fine now the abuna being on a bottom shelf this being on a mid shelf it's probably a one or two degree temperature difference but um, that's not nearly enough to cause any any trauma. Uh, it should be the same hardness, same pH, uh, same everything else, because it's all the same water source. Um, and if anything, it'll be a little bit cleaner for them. So I'm gonna chase these little things around in here for probably longer than I intend to and get them in a catch cup. And then I'll check back in. We'll grab the Imbuna probably in one quick scoop and throw them in here. Well. After uh, destroying a lot of the plants in the tank and almost not enough cussing to even count, we have the two female guppies, the two little fry I could find, and one blue shrimp. And uh, the rest of the blue shrimp that decided to outsmart me and hide in the rocks, um, well, the abuna are just going to be happy for them. Let's see if I can stay to my word and catch all these abuna in one scoop. Well, the reason I said I could catch these guys in one scoop is because I have a net as wide as the tank. But um, they're also terrified of the camera, so this isn't gonna go well at all. But as promised, I'll try and see if we can get. Come on now. I said two, right? Two. Sweet. Alright, I'm gonna wheel these over into the tank and I will check in as we're dropping the last ones in. All right, so using two nets, I was able to get them all into one net. There's seven of them. Now, I can wheel my way over to the new tank. And we can all watch them go in together. I'm gonna put them as far away from the rock as possible. And I feel like they're still gonna go straight there anyway because they're in Buna and that's what in Buna do. And uh, that was very traumatizing. It made a mess of the other tank. So we're probably not gonna see them for quite a while. Every time I move these guys, they hide on me for a very long time. This tank is so trashed. We're not gonna see the guppies or shrimp in it for now anyway. So I'll just dump them. Make sure nobody got stuck in the cup. And uh, yeah, there it is. And there's some of the random stuff I do on like a daily basis down here. Uh, monitoring tanks, keeping an eye on parameters, keeping an eye on the fish, 
making moves, whether it be for breeding or what's best for the fish. Um, day in the life at Up North Aquatics. If this is the kind of stuff you like, let me know. Um, please subscribe if you're not subscribed. I would really appreciate it. Uh, almost at 500 subscribers, that'd be huge to hit that. And um, thanks for stopping by. And I almost forgot to top these guys back off, so here it is. <laughs> uh, see you next week. Hope you all have a good one.